All right, guys, it's Teaser back with another video. A lot of people have been asking in the comments how to properly set up and use Diffuse on a Wii U console. I've already done a video showing how to solder into the Wii U console, which is what you're viewing right here, a finished uh, soldering job. So I opted to run the wires long enough from the inside of the console that I could reassemble it and put the Raspberry Pi Pico on top because I plug this into the computer to power it as well as to access the serial console. Now you don't have to do that. You could opt to make these wires much shorter and tape the Raspberry Pi Pico onto the back of the board and not reassemble it to this level. And that's entirely up to you. That being said, this is the finished product when Diffuse has been soldered into a Wii U. Let's step back though and see what we need in order to get Diffuse loaded onto the Raspberry Pi Pico and actually use it with this console. All right, so these are all the items that you need in order to get Diffuse installed onto the Raspberry Pi Pico, as well as use Diffuse on the Nintendo Wii U console. So what you need is a one gigabyte SD card, and it has to be an SD card. You cannot use an SDHC card. They are not compatible. It must be one gigabyte. If it's larger, it will not work. If it's smaller, there's a small chance that it will work. But my recommendation is just go and buy this SanDisk one for the Wii. This has worked every single time. I actually jumped through hoops trying to find this card before, well, before I knew it existed. I tried three or four other cards from SanDisk as well as a card from Samsung. They didn't work, but they were also larger than one gigabyte. And several of them, just for testing purposes, after the fact, I did try some of the micro SD cards, which are SD, um, HC, HC, XC. Well, I'll put it on the screen, whatever it's called. Um, they did not work. So this is what we're gonna load uh, a bunch of files that are part of the Fuse onto, and that's what gets inserted into the Wii U console. You need the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, you may or may not need this. What this is, is a SD card to USB adapter. Uh, Lexar makes them, so does Anchor, so does a bunch of other companies. You can buy any one you want. But I need this because I don't have an SD card slot on my computer. So I need an adapter to be able to access this, format it, as well as transfer files to it. And the last thing you need is this cable right here. And what this is, is a USB-A to USB micro B cable. And this specifically is to power the Raspberry Pi Pico, as well as to transfer the firmware for the fuse onto the Pico. Now, that being said, let's hop over to a computer and I'm actually going to show you guys how to set up this SD card as well as how to get the diffuse firmware on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So what this will require is we are, you need a computer. It can be Windows, it can be Mac, it, it can be Linux, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to spe specifically going to be using a Windows machine and I'm choosing a Windows machine because I think the vast majority of people out there will either have one or had access to one. But the operation is basically the same, whether you're on Linux or Mac as well. So let's go over to the computer and I'll show you guys how to get those set up. By the way, guys, in case I didn't make this clear, before you solder this Raspberry Pi Pico to the wires and into the Wii U, you should be flashing the diffuse firmware to it, which is what I'm about to show you. So do this step last. All right, so what I have here is a Windows tablet and I just wanna showcase what happens when you plug a Raspberry Pi Pico into a computer. So we got the USB-A end into the machine and we're gonna take the other end which is the micro B and we're going to plug it into the Raspberry Pi Pico. And this is what you should get a USB mass storage device. And this is where we're going to drop the firmware file for diffuse. I'm going to show you guys on a computer by recording the actual screen so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So let's move over to the computer now and we'll take a look at that. All right, guys, so we're at the computer. We've already plugged in the Raspberry Pi Pico using the USB cable. 
So what we can do is go to this PC and we can see that a USB mass storage device shows up. So this is the Raspberry Pi Pico. We're gonna double click this and open this and we're just gonna leave this here for a moment. Now, before we can load the firmware, we need to download the firmware. So I'm gonna head over to Firefox and I'm already on the GitHub page for this Wii U mod chip. Um, I will put a link in the description for you so you can find this effortlessly. So what we wanna do is go right over here where it says binary zip version 1.1, which is the latest release. We're gonna click this and this comes with a whole set of instructions, but that's the entire purpose of this video. I'm showing you exactly what to do so you don't have to read this, but it's here in case you get stuck or you're confused or need some clarification. So we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. We're gonna bypass all that stuff and we're gonna hit this diffuse version 1.1 zip. And we're gonna download that. So I'm just downloading everything to the downloads directory. So I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna right click this and I'm gonna hit extract all. And we're just gonna hit extract. All right. So then we can close that window. Now, the only file we need out of this directory right now is going to be this pico underscore diffuse dot uf2 file. And what you wanna do is go back to your Raspberry Pi Pico, which is right here. We're gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it right into the Pico's directory. Now, the moment you do this, it's going to disconnect from the computer, and that is exactly what you want. That means that the uh, firmware for Diffuse has been installed on the Raspberry Pi Pico, and we're done with that part of the tutorial. And as you can see, it just kicks out. So, and that's what we want. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the SD card and I'm gonna show you how to set that up. All right, so we got the SD card plugged in. So I have to use an adapter with my computer. So you might be plugging in differently, but it doesn't really change anything as far as the steps are concerned. The first thing we wanna do is go to the control panel. And if we type up here, disk, it's gonna give us the ability to create and format hard disk partitions. So we're gonna click this and my drive shows up here and it's unallocated. Um, that's perfectly fine. It doesn't matter if it's allocated or not because what we're actually going to be doing is writing this boot one image to the flash drive using a utility called Bellina Etcher. I will put the link in the description for this, but we're just gonna go down here. We're gonna download the Windows version. And we're gonna go ahead and install this. I could have, sw oh no, it doesn't actually install, it just runs. Um, once this opens up, we're gonna hit flash from a file. So let's minimize this. Again, the file that we're grabbing is this boot one. So we're gonna hit flash. I'm gonna go to my downloads because that's where I have this stored. We're gonna select boot one, we're gonna hit open, and then we're gonna select the target. So the target for me is, well, it shows up as a generic storage device. It, yours might show up differently depending on whether or not you're using a SD card adapter to USB like I am, or if you're plugging this directly in, it's gonna depend on the computer, the size of the drive. If it's 1.02, that's the correct drive. The, the smart thing about Etcher is that it's not gonna allow you to select a hard drive or SSD. That's a system drive, as you can see down here, my system drive shows up and it has a warning it says no we're not going to use that so we're going to go ahead and select the first one we're going to hit select one and we're going to hit flash and we're going to hit yes and what this should do is it should only take a few seconds it's going to flash this boot one image to the sd card oh there it goes okay so it's my was a little slower i expected it to be quicker once it's done doing that it'll tell you it's successful we can go ahead and close this out and now, all right, let me just unplug it and plug it back in. This, this might happen to you guys too. If it does, just 
unplug the SD card and plug it back to the computer. But what I think this is, is, is it's actually the adapter I'm using that causes this to happen because I've noticed if I do this on a Mac, I don't have this problem. And the Mac has a standard SD card slot, which makes this a heck of a lot easier. You want to go into new simple volume after you write this uh, boot one file to this. And you can leave the volume size alone. And we just want to format as a fat file system. And then hit finish. And then what I like to do is... I like to go in and rename this. You don't have to do this. But let's just call it Diffuse. All right, so inside Diffu Diffuse, we have nothing right now, and that's okay. So what we're gonna do is we're going to move this entire folder into here, as well as firmware. And that's all you should need. Now, if you need a reference of what you need, we can go back to the GitHub page and they, the um, page actually shows you all of the files that you should have on your SD card right here. So we have the firmware.image, we got the Wii U directory and here I'll show you. Inside the Wii U directory, we have, um, you can ignore this DS store stuff but inside the iOS, we have the Waffle Core and Waffle uh, Debug, which if we go back to this page, that's what you need. So once that's done, we can go ahead and we can eject this from the computer. We're done with that. And we can move back over to the Wii U console. We've done everything that we need to do to set up the memory card and the Raspberry Pi Pico in order to use it in the Wii U. So at this point, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and solder those wires into your Wii U and then get the Raspberry Pi Pico connected to the other end of them. Also, just to be clear, the SD card we created plugs into the front SD card slot on the Wii U console. Otherwise, Diffuse won't boot. All right, so what you should see if you have a successful uh, diffuse boot is the following on screen. So you don't have to worry about the error message at the bottom here where it says failed to load uh, otp.bin. We don't have it on the SD card and you can just go ahead and um, dump this using the minute menu. So. It's really outside the scope of this video, but I am just going to hit the power button right now to continue to show what this looks like if Diffuse is working. And what you should end up getting is a minute menu here, which gives you a bunch of options for backing up and restoring and stuff like that. But like I said, that's outside the scope of this video, so I'm not going to focus on that. I just wanted to show how to get Diffuse actually working on the console. What I will do is do a follow-up video, probably showing what you can do with the fuse and some of the diagnostic steps that you can take in order to figure out what's going on with the console. But most of these consoles, if you get to this point, they're recoverable and you should be able to repair them. All right, so now let's go ahead and connect to the serial console that is part of the fuse using a computer. All right, guys, so one other thing I wanted to go over in this video is how to connect to the serial console if you are plugging this into a computer and the way that we do that and I, again I will put the link in the description is we want to grab a utility called putty which is a SSH telnet client so we're just gonna grab the installer here And we're going to go ahead and run this, and we're going to install this. And we don't need to view the readme. Hit finish. And then what we're going to do is 
open up putty. All right, so the first thing you need to do on putty is go to serial and that, and it'll say com one. You can leave every setting here default. Com one may not necessarily be what the Raspberry Pi is connected to the computer as though. So what we need to do is figure that out. And in order to figure that out, I need to go ahead and plug this uh, Raspberry Pi Pico into the computer. So give me a second. All right, so it should be plugged in. Let's head over to the control panel here. Oh, let me double click that. And we're gonna go into device manager, which should be underneath hardware and sound device manager. And then we are coming down to ports here. And as you can see, the actual port for the Pico is COM3. So this is how you identify it. So I'm gonna leave that open. We'll just come back over here. We're gonna change this to COM3 and then we're gonna hit open. And what they should do if I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the console on and what we should see is a readout. Oh, and there it is. Anyhow, that is the serial console and how to connect to it. And it can be very usable if you have a console that does not have video output for some reason. So at least you can get um, ISFX hacks installed, which usually fixes the video output and you can work on the console. All right, guys. So that is how you set up the fuse and get it working on a Wii U console. I'm not going to go into how to use it to diagnose the consoles in this video because it's outside the scope of this video. That being said, I did want to cover one troubleshooting step for the Wii U console. So what you can see down here is I have the Wii U set up with the fuse. I have it soldered in place and I have the memory card sticking out of the console. And the reason why is I want to simulate a situation where somebody has misconfigured that memory card or is missing key files and what will happen. So if I push the power button here, you'll notice that the light does this blinking and changing the colors. The disk drive is going to spin up like it did, but you get nothing on screen. And here, here's the thing. I have this plugged into my computer right now. And even on the serial console, you're going to get nothing but an error message. The reason why is because the fuse does not have the appropriate files on the SD card and can't locate them to actually load. So if you do have the memory card set up correctly and we push this in and then we hit the power button and I can't remember if you got to hit it a bunch of times or you might have to hold it. Yeah, we can just hold it and then turn it back on. And with those files now on the memory card and the fact that Diffuse can locate them, you will be loaded into the minute menu like you have seen. That being said, hopefully this allows people out there to start using Diffuse and it clears up some confusion. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or make a post on my website at tzerf.com. I'll probably make a video in the future on some of the diagnostic steps you can take using Diffuse in order to repair a console. I'm always working on new stuff, so you never know what is really going to get posted. But that being said, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in another video. Oh, hey, if you guys are still here, I plan on doing a video soon on this little device here that I came across. So it's in rough shape, needs a lot of work, but I thought it was pretty cool. Anyhow, catch you later.